Okay, so I'll talk about open source, not open source, open HPC certification in the relationship to open source on behalf of the HPC certification form. So it's a little bit detached, I would say, from the idea of um, academia, but it is connected in that sense that HPC, it's high performance computing, that we talk here about teaching to practitioners the competencies that they need. And practitioners can be someone from higher education, but it can be also someone that just uses a certain software and has not necessarily, you know, higher education. So I will briefly talk about the challenges for HPC, and I think we, we see them as well in open source training. So what we know is that not all the users possess the right level of training. This leads in HPC particular to the problem that you inefficiently use the system. So, and the systems are rather expensive, so you better get more efficiency out of it. Secondly, in the user themselves, on the, app, on the practitioner, there might be some kind of frustration. They're not being able to do what they need to do, or they do it rather complex way. So you lose a lot of potential. So we want to have good training to save compute time, costs, and of course, the nerves of the people. Also, we have diverse user background and goals. Yeah, so this in HPC user may be someone that just wants to get a PhD in biology, has very little um, background in terms of computation, but needs to apply certain tools to simulate whatever, right? Maybe a virus or whatever you do, right? There, um, it could also be a computer scientist, and then it's not that big of a deal, but there are really a diverse set of users. Similarly, again, in open source, when you are just a user, you want to use your computer, um, we, we see the problem that in desktop systems, I would say, um, if you, you have a mom that is not used to use a computer at all, and then you have these smart kids that kind of play games all the time. So these are different kind of, totally different types of users, yeah? And you want to educate all of them. So, and learning is now not easy. So the users need to understand actually the benefit that it has if they have certain knowledge for the tasks, yeah? So they need to know this knowledge exists and this will ease their lives, so to speak. Then there's a lot of different training material out there and with different quality, overlapping, non-overlapping, really confusing for the people. And lastly, when you compare the curriculum of different data centers, so in terms of what they offer, in terms of training, it's hard to compare. Sometimes they call the course the same, but the content differs. Sometimes the name of, of course differs, but the content is pretty much the same, yeah? And there's only a slight extension or something to it. And the users get confused and they may say, oh, this is not useful for me, missing the chance to attend the event, but they miss this critical 10% that improve their life so much. Yeah, lastly, um, data centers have difficulties to verify the skills of users. And I'd say in open source, we have the same. So are you actually, and I constantly ask this myself, when I apply software, am I actually proficient with this software? And how do we know that we are proficient? Well, it is has to do with efficiency. But if we talk about efficiency, then the second question is, of course, how do we know what is, you know, really efficient? Someone might find it efficient to, you know, walk line by line over a large text file, removing the first character in line for hours. Yeah, which is where, so they need to know, they need to see these perspectives. Yeah, and as data center, we want to verify it, and as users should be able to verify that they're actually doing the right things. That would be great. So what is now the HPC certification forum? Well, it is an independent organization, which goals are to develop fine-grained standardized HPC knowledge representations. So what competencies do exist? How are they defined? It's kind of like a puzzle for competencies for everyone, uh, like practitioner, students, administrators, and so on. And these puzzle mat should be supported with navigational means and role-specific knowledge maps. The second goal is to, that's in the name, the certification, is to establish international certificates attesting knowledge. Yeah, such that you can, in your CV, you can write down, I have this skill, and then you have means to verify it. And it means the same if someone else writes this down, they also have maybe the same basic knowledge here. So, and lastly, to support an ecosystem around the HPC competencies. 
And by HPC competences, in fact, um, as HPC is 100% Linux nowadays, it includes a lot of open source components. And that's why it's really relevant here as part of the open source specialist group. So the scope of the forum is that it is basically the central authority for competence representation, certification, and support. But we limit the scope of the forum so it does not provide any content itself but we happily link to existing content and it does not create a curriculum. That's the responsibility of individuals or institutions such as universities or data centers. Um, so yeah, it's an independent international body. It's organized into steering board, which is selected on an annual basis. It has full members with voting rights. And what we expect from full members is that they contribute to the project a little bit, like say an hour a month, by at least attending the meetings and discussing. Anyone can associate and any institution can associate with the forum. And we collaborate with different institutions and different um, organizations such, such as SIG HPC Education Chapter. So the responsibilities of the organization is to create and maintain what we call the competence standard. So this is an evolving standard, which is the puzzle mat and this organization, as we learn, into a tree of those competencies, and it provides tools and this ecosystem around the competencies. So we have governance rules splitting the responsibility across various um, roles in the steering board. Um, so that's me from the University of Reading, and then we have a couple of roles for the curation of the skill tree into the general skill tree and the various subtopics that we have. Um, yeah, we have publicity and someone for examination as well. It's an international and open free to join organization and so is also represented in the board. So how do we organize the map? Well, we have a web page as a central hub. It's, it's listed here, hpc-certificate.org with mailing lists. We have monthly public meetings on our Slack channel, which we found works very well for a large number of people. And just this kind of chat medium works really, and it saves a lot of bandwidth, right? And allows you to work on different topics at the same time. We, you know, we are really pleased, I think, with making this choice. Um, we also have an annual general assembly. Um, the, the form is a kind of a first of a festival session at ISC or some kind of workshop. How do we handle the data? Well, everything that we develop is pretty much available in the open under GitHub that you find here. An exception are the examination questions for good reason. So let's talk now more about the skills, which is a part of this competence standard. So the competences we speak as, as a form of competence is a skill. Yeah, a skill defines a background, learning objectives, and learning outcomes. And then we have a skill tree here, which provides a basic means to navigate those competencies somewhat from a coarse grain fashion. So when you say, for example, I want to use something in the HPC environment, you go into this tree. When you want to develop some software for HPC, you go into this tree. When you think we are concerned about performance, then you go into this tree. When you administer, you know, you go into this subtree. So I think, and then we have core knowledge, which is HPC knowledge over here. Yeah, and there are also, this is just the top levels of the tree. It goes rather deep. It's not completed and we have more than 150 um, skills, which still need some attention. Um, and you can still link between different skills. Yeah, so I can say, you know, in the use part, I may need something about cluster operating systems of which we have something like shells yeah, and command line input. Uh, we This can be linked, for example, to some part of the HPC knowledge over here as well. Yeah, and certificates then bundle several skills into attestable units. So let's have a look at one example skill, which is a, still not in the leaf level. This is uh, the skill called command line interface to be found in use 1.1. So if I go here into the skill, I go to the use branch, use one is cluster operating systems, and then directly nest that you will find command line interface. Yeah, and then there's a short background, which where you have to make a little bit more searchable and navigatable by keywords. Yeah, similar to a search engine, Google does a good job here as well though. And then we have these learning aims and we have learning outcomes, which are here shortened. Yeah, these learning outcomes must be examinable, examinable, which is, of course, the goal for the certification. 
So during this process, yeah, I wanted to share a little bit the experience that we have gotten. Um, we learned it is hard to classify the competencies into such fine-grained schema, yeah, and to organize them. There are many ways, there are many alternatives you can do. What we learned, though, is that in terms of the granularity of a skill description, we learned that we should cover about one to four hours of a lecture, a workshop, or a learning unit to be one skill on the leaf level. Yeah, so that is something that someone could cover really quickly, learn quickly. And that's something that you could tell someone, someone, you know, if you had this skill on this leaf level here, this would make a difference in the current work you are doing. Right. And it's not that they have to spend weeks to learn it. They can really grasp this, you know, like I said, in one to four hours. And then it will hopefully change the life of this person. So that's really a very fine grained thing compared to a lot of certification that you find in the area of open source in particular, where you have to do a lot of topics where you say some of them you never have to apply. Here you can focus on things that really matter. So that's at least the idea. Yeah, if they are too coarse grained, we found that it's no help for structuring the material. Yeah, if I say skill Linux, what does this actually mean? Yeah, and not everyone wants to be a Linux expert to just use HPC system. And if it's too fine grained, yeah, if it's like 10 minutes, how to use the tool PWD, this is, you know, this is not really meaningful. Yeah, then I spend more time reading about the skill than actually doing something useful. So, in terms of organizing, we found this skill in terms of, like I showed you here, sorting it by this idea where you start. What is your core, you know, target? So I, I want to learn something about HPC. I want to use it and so on. This is was was really helpful. We we, we figured that's really great. Um, here we have one part that big data analytics, which is a newer one that we will work on. We try to basically um, this this to be rephrased to fit into the other ones. But as big data is such a hype, we just added it as a separate branch. Go a little bit with that as well. But there can be those links. Uh, yeah, about the version of the skill. So of course, we come up with such a history and this certification standard. We can't just say, you know, that's it. Yeah, everyone has to live with it. So it has to be developed. So we defined that every year, there could be another release or every half a year it can be a minor release, for example, of the skill tree. So it can be moving along based on the feedback of the HPC community and the practitioners. Um, and they basically justify this approach. So, yeah, for some further considerations, we found the certificate definition. Um, we, we wanted to bundle a set of useful skills together. Why we, we didn't want to allow someone to test a single skill because it might be very easy to cheat it. Yeah, like I said, if I want to just check a skill that is about using bash with, for basics, yeah, basic some basics in bash, um, it might be just something that you can find out with the cheat sheet. So we, we have to still map out those certificates in more detail, but we want to do a short exam in that sense that um, multiple of those skills will be combined. And then the certificate mentions all the skills that are covered with it. So you get back the individual scale skills that you are proficient in. And we found really that's really beneficial to separate this idea of the certification standard, which contains the skills, the certificate itself and its content providers. So it's really similar to this concept of high school graduation, particularly in German. Germany, um, where you say, you know, this is the things you need to know, like in math, you need to know how to add two numbers, which are two digits long or something. So that's a clear definition of what you need to know. And then you have someone else that delivers whatever fitting content or training material for you. It can be provided by different institutions and so on. And we are not competing with them, which we found also a great addition because competition ruins the idea of having a shared standard. Lastly, teachers can put batches on their materials. It's, it's a core idea for content providers. So you can say my training material covers, you know, this subscale or a set of skills. Last, wanted external information to be linked to the skill tree. 
And this allows you to provide specific views. For example, you could think if you are a tester of a certain software, let's say LLVM, maybe an LLVM in HPC, yeah, you may need certain skills. And I can just say, you know, for this rule, I require those skills. Now, this is well defined, right? Compare this to a, a typical job offer when you see uh, you need to know, you need to be proficient with skill X, C programming. Yeah, what does this really mean? Yeah. And so here is rather well defined what it means because you can refer to the standard. And so you have purpose specific representations and content. And you could go that far that you say, for my particular software to do it, please know about those skills and then you will be most efficient. Yeah. And, and this is the, the guide that we, we give the users and the practitioners. So let's talk quickly about the status. So we have a development version of the competence standard online. We have a lot of technical representations of the HPC skill tree in Markdown. We had it before in XML, but now we switched completely to Markdown for easier processing. We have JavaScript for visualization of the tree. And in our wiki, that it, which embeds the markdown, we have also options to include further information from external sources, such as the training material, which is a prototype, and events. So we have prototypes for exams and various frameworks. We have a lot of processes that have been sketched on the web page, not sketched and actually developed. We have a seal of endorsement like this one that you can put on. We engage with various stakeholders. Yeah, and we conduct some surveys to verify the skill tree, by which we need, of course, more to do. And again, all our developments are under open licenses, except the exam questions. So this is a screenshot of the wiki, which is a simple doku wiki with some extensions, with some plugins that are not yet are not shown. But basically underneath here, there are some extensions that are automatically injected from a RESTful service by which we you query the competence standard. Right, how can we contribute to the skill tree and, and you know, develop it further? The competence standard, well, we have our web page with Markdown version that is still managed in Git. It's also in GitHub, so you can do pull requests, reviews, comments, and so on. We have also a mind map which shows the structure of the skills, which is always a great first place when trying to make bigger changes. There's a way to synchronize from the mind map into the Git so basically, when you do when we do bigger changes, we manipulate the, the mind map and synchronize it with the Git, and then it's pushed to the wiki and can be used. Yeah, using the tool FreeMind, we have Slack, which is the only say, um, well known open tool in our stack because it's very convenient and not critical for our mission. We have some videos up in the HPC certification forum channel how to use it. I want to quickly mention some about the certification process today, how it works. So the assessment prototype works like this. The users take a multiple choice test on any time. It's basically a combination of JavaScript and web service. And then we select a number of questions randomly from a pool. And the system draws for each of those questions a subset of responses because we have up to 10 possible responses. And that basically is then your question pool. And of course, depending on what we manage them internally, so that we say for this skill, this um, learning objective, we have basically for each of them a separate file in which all the questions are stored. That means when we compile a test, you can draw for each of the learning objectives, one or two of the questions, depending on the size of the respective certificate and so on. Yeah, then you su su submit the solution basically to the web server. The results get approved at some point automatically, hopefully. At the moment, we, we didn't do that, or we say we will do it for the first set of instances, of course, manual to verify it. And then we create a certificate and return it by email. There will be a computer verifiable proof that the skill is created. So we return a text version with a GPG signature. We have also an online service where you can verify it if you don't have GPG installed, which is embedded in the link. So we, we on our privacy, so we minimize the information stored on the servers, we some information for statistics. Yeah, so like the institution that you are working in, if you want to give us this information, yeah. 
we have some measures um, to prevent cheating and brute forcing, like a delay and so on, and how this registration works on the web page. I could go into details, but I spare this. Um, yeah, here is you know the certificate, how it can look like in in print form. This is delivered, and here is the text representations. Yeah, and our goal in this year was to basically create the first certificate. We have been a bit slowed down, I would say, by the COVID crisis. Um, but I still hope that we can do our first certificate with a couple of skills. And those skills will be, in fact, being those command line Linux skills, which are elementary for users. So they are actually valid besides HPC. And I hope that will open as well more interest in this approach in the open source community and we see if that is suitable yeah i'm personally i have to say i'm while i like commercial companies to do certification yeah i think it should not be the sole business model yeah for me personally the education part is something which you know should not make you rich so to speak as a company but it should be more open and allowing people to learn such that they can do great things and then potentially they can donate right so that's my personal opinion about education yeah just as a side note good so for open source in general you know i said this hpc requires linux i think maybe this general concepts that we developed are relevant to a wider range of practitioners because i think it would be absolutely great to have those stuff for open source for Linux, just as an example. What we did as part of the certification program, we just created a new process in which we said, we allow expert, experts to adopt skills. So the key idea is, and I think that is what I sometimes miss, you know, in an education system in schools, yeah? So the key idea is really that you have an expert in a topic, this expert adopts the skill. So let's assume I'm the developer here of Drupal, yeah? I could say, okay, why not looking at the skill definition? And this is just a page of text, yeah? And I look at this and say, yeah, if someone wants to use Drupal, these are the key things you should know. So I formulate those learning objectives with some help maybe. And now I'm in charge to maintain, so to speak, this description, yeah? So if someone makes changes, that's still allowed. I, I review them and I make sure that this is what the community needs. And I think that is really a better model than have someone that is not proficient in such a software piece trying to figure out what people should know. Yeah. And again, if you know it is a very coarse grained skill, yeah, you could easily split it always in sub skills that are fine grained enough to say someone, you know, you should know absolutely skill one and three, you don't worry about two. Yeah. Later, if you find one and three great, to do two. Okay, so the idea is really with the code maintain maintainer. Right, to wrap up, um, we see think there's a lot of benefit in this strategy for HPC practitioners and data centers. For practitioners, it will increase the motivation to participate as they get certificates that are recognized in the CV. They can validate the knowledge via tests to ensure that they are proficient, right? And this is for some people that have this problem um, to not understand what they are good at, right? Some people say, do you have the skill? And they say, no, no, no. Uh, here they have proven that they have the skill. So they can obviously say, yeah, I have obtained this skill with an official certified test. So they can stand to their competencies. We can browse the competencies then to, to identify recommended and required skills required related to certain tasks. We, we hopefully can understand and compare teaching across different sites better. For data centers, the idea is that you can share teaching material now better because you can understand what is covered and what is different and what where are your gaps in the data? What, what do you use of teaching? It simplifies the documentation of taught skills because you can say, I'm talking skill one and three. So, and here are the links. I don't, you don't have to repeat all the text again, writing a new abstract. Um, yeah, so you can just, specifically to users in my data centers you should you should have this and this software because that's what's relevant we use LLVM a lot so here is the here you go here are the skills and lastly and i think this is something that the future will show and i strongly believe in privacy or there i think what 
hope we need society to be most efficient and very productive is that we have a way to optimize ourselves. And one way of doing that is that we are able to correlate a lack of skill with the efficient or inefficient use of some technology. Yeah. So if we know, you know, people make repeatedly this kind of mistake here, yeah? well, they should probably have this skill. So we prescribe them to do this skill course. Yeah. So, and we do this for their own sake. Yeah. So it's their choice ultimately to do it. But if I would be taught, I can be, you know, twice as productive writing text, you know, scientific text or something. If I do this little thing that takes me four hours, I would probably do it. Yeah. The problem is it's then weeks or weeks of training that I would have to do as a user. And in the end, I figure out this was actually a useless course. That's unfortunately the reality sometimes that I face when I be just a practitioner in whatever topic. Not saying everything is useless. Yeah, but you get this little 10% maybe. And then you say this was a great course because I get 10% out of it. I think we can do more as a society. We have the right tools. Yeah, anyway, the final slide. So the HPC certification program is the effort to standardize the representation and certification of relevant HPC skills. We have these hierarchical definitions of skills for practitioners. It's a building blocks that can be cherry picked for different tasks. We don't provide content on a linear curriculum for data centers. You know, hopefully at some point, um, previously here or there, we may use statistics and machine learning to direct users to the right skill to make it, them better. And maybe even what we see is that you make a certain skill mandatory requirement. Yeah. And we have these customizable representations, navigations, which we find great. And, you know, join us here on our Slack and mailing lists. And I hope you enjoyed this and my personal opinion as well. Looking forward to some discussion. So there had been two questions. So is your HPC material tied into any undergraduate, postgraduate degree program? The answer is no. It's absolutely agnostic. You can absolutely tie in into a program some of the skills that we teach and link to them. Yeah, saying you need these and these skills, like when you connect to a cluster and so on, you have to have this kind of remote working, interactive working skills and so forth. Um, yeah. So Andy asked the question, so where does certification sit alongside fast moving and emerging disciplines such as DevOps and serverless? I would absolutely agree. I think what we need is absolutely this kind of principle that we have those small little learning units that are a couple of hours and you can revise them, right? I think what you don't want to have is that you say, I have a skill and this skill is so specific, right? Let's say um, in terms of like serverless, yeah? I could absolutely imagine having some, you have high level skill that is about system architectures. We talk about open source, yeah? Component development, system architectures, and then you have a sub skill, which is serverless. Maybe you make it even more, but you wouldn't go into too much details or specific technology. I would put this into a knowledge sub part and say, what to learn about serverless, yeah? You think about the learning objectives and, Honestly, I think if, if I package things together, I probably don't get more than one to two hours in terms of lecture material out of it. And that's a good granularity because next year or in five years, how much do I have to change? Maybe one of the learning objectives needs a slight adjustment or something. But I wouldn't say serverless is crap. I should remove it. Yeah. Um, and neither would I say these learning objectives, they are all wrong. Yeah, maybe. So we see this slight transition over time where things change. And I believe that is what, what we see in DevOps as well. So far, you, so far, I've talked about a lot about this knowledge part, more usable skills. But it could be as specific that you say, having a, a, a Kubernetes, right, skill. Yeah, so and a Kubernetes skill could teach you, you know, basic things, how to use Kubernetes, right? Again. If, if it is more than four hours of training material, you probably partition it. Yeah, you would say I have a basic skill. I have an intermediate skill and an expert skill, maybe. Or maybe you would even say, um, you know, it's it's a couple of sub skills. I as a proficient computer user, if I find a software and within four hours, I'm unable to do the basic things with it. I'm probably not using it anymore. Yeah, and I'm not willing to learn 20 hours how to use the software to get the first steps done because I'm more 
on this experimental side of person. Yeah, everyone is different. So what's this about me? But I think it's a good concept. And uh, so Andy also asks how much theory and how much work work had work Vocational, what, what does it mean? Practical, oh, practical, okay. Um, uh, yeah, I think the goal of what we're doing here in HPC is we want to enable people to do things. So the enabling aspect is in the foreground. So anything that we put into knowledge, it's only in knowledge because it's used so much everywhere that it, we must link it in various places and we must say people, you know, for those things, this is really the basic requirement. It's like to do this in math, right? You have to understand how to add to numbers. So this is really a basic knowledge element, yeah, that we need to um, cover. But the goal is not to add to numbers. The goal is to do, to, you know, buy your groceries or something and know how much it costs, right? Which is the application. So it's really about the application here and make people more efficient. And I think that's what I wish, you know, we see in open source as well. And I think that's why it's so great sometimes to just, people really use Google, right, to learn skills. I do this the same, like when we set up this blue, big blue button instance here. And I, I was, you know, saying, yeah, we can set, I can try and to set this up. Yeah. And I looked and I found a couple of blogs. I just followed literally what they've written, thought about what they do a little bit, but it worked, yeah. And, you know, something didn't quite work, but mostly it worked. And then I thought about a couple of more things. So I was quickly, in a couple of hours, this thing worked completely. Yeah. From And I didn't know anything about Amazon, how, how to get started with this, with the free cloud here, because I use Azure from the university anyway. But so it was great. And, and I think that's the kind of experience. Of course, it means I still have some loopholes in my knowledge in, in, in those particular subskills, but I can gradually fill them and I see the value in filling them like being aware that there is a problem with security potentially and then this isn't this problem, right? But we have to be made aware of, about things that we don't know that are relevant to us. And then I think it, the motivation is much higher if we see these outcomes. Anyway, I'm talking too much about my private opinion. Um, yeah, that's about it. And since there was no further question, I would close that part. And we 